right, guys, welcome back to the Wildflower Podcast. Today we are sitting down and talking about the battle of the mind or whatever you want to call it. We spoke a little bit about this Mm -hmm. in the last episode about motivation and Ashton reference. You know, if you can get control over these four walls, like Mm -hmm. your mind, really, you can do anything. We wanted to dive in a little bit deeper to the mental battles that we all kind of like work through. I don't want to like do a long intro, but just, you know, (laughs) I kind of am, but there's a lot to it. I feel like the lies from the enemies, the voices we listen to, and there's a lot of ways that we can go on this. So we hope that it encourages you guys just uh, here in this conversation. We're also sipping on coffee from my new coffee maker. (laughs) It's so cute. I'll pop up a picture on the screen if you're watching over on YouTube. It's a really cute coffee pot. And so she got some black rifle coffee Yum. she's I'm actually hyped. never had a brewed coffee maker before I haven't and I think that's because I you know I didn't love coffee like you I used to haze her all the time about having an issue with coffee like she told her, me I needed freedom ministry for my did, coffee I mean, addiction she, I, I need freedom ministry now <laughs> but I did I was so I would so haze her and bother her until Taya arrived and never slept so that changed yeah. everything yeah. so we've always had like a Keurig and I've been wanting to get a really nice brewed coffee maker for a long time mm-hmm. and this one presented itself and it's so I'm so cute. chaotic and busy right now that literally I need something that I can preset. Yep. I'm and trying. Be ready when you wake up. People are helping me get things in line <laughs> to be more organized. So we're getting to sip on yep. that today. So we got our coffee. It has been raining for days and days, which Texas really needs. But oh, sure. the weather's been insane. It keeps you kind of in a like somber, Mellow, chill, I don't like, know, mood. Totally. Yeah. I thrive off the sun. So I feel like lately I'm just like I felt more tired for sure. Totally. Well, so yeah, today I think we wanted to just kind of like chat about a sound mind, ment- you know, mental clarity. I mean, I mean, we really don't have a title for it, but yeah, yeah, a battle of the mind. I mean, we all war have a war that goes on in our mind and that's really something that every human mm-hmm. deals with. And, you know, I think people in this time, it seemed like an epide- epidemic of mental illness, oh of health gosh. issues, of or mental health issues, excuse me, but like, okay, it's kind of like I was thinking the other day when I was praying about, you know, even talking about this and, you know what's changed, what's different, you know, and, you know, maybe some of the things that have changed is that people are more outspoken about it now. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, the Lord reminded me, I actually, a couple of weeks ago, I told you this, I deleted TikTok. I oh, told you that. Oh, I didn't know I, I, that. Did I not tell you that? No. Okay. It was like two weeks ago. I decided, I just really felt that it wasn't filling my mind with the mm-hmm. things that I wanted to fill my mind and my heart with. Yeah. And, you know, like I like funny things and whatever, you know, and I'm here for a good time. But, you know, some of that stuff on TikTok is so over-sexualized yeah. and just inappropriate content that I don't need to be, you know, no matter how funny it is, because yeah. some of it's freaking hilarious. Yeah. I just noticed that it was affecting mm-hmm. my spirit, my heart. Yeah. Well, there's, there's, uh, you know, it says guard your heart. And I just think that it's so important what we consume. We've touched on that before, Mm -hmm. but it's easy to watch these funny videos and go, oh, like, it's just, it's just funny. Like, it's not that big of a deal, but you don't realize how those things sort of seep in and how then they affect. They take root in your life. And I think, you know, even me being a very devout, outspoken Christian or Christ follower, I like to say, you know, it can, I noticed my time being spent more on just scrolling Mm -hmm. than feeling my brain and my heart with the things of God and actually posted the scripture a couple days ago. It's Proverbs four. And this reminded me of it. So, so above all guard the affections of your heart for they affect all that you are. Pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being for from there flows the wellspring of life. And I just was convicted about filling my mind and my heart with that because no matter how guarded you feel that you are or rooted you are in the Lord, you, you do, you become what you consume Mm -hmm. period. And so as I was praying, I mean, I got rid of it and that was kind of like a big thing for me. I say a big thing. I just, I like to laugh at the end of the day and just do mindless things. But yeah. the Lord was like, there's no space for this in your yeah. life anymore. And so as I was praying about just like the mental area, I mean, people, our circumstances can cause our mind to go astray. But a huge thing in this day and age is social media. It's like, what huge. are you consuming? And, you know, yes, there are positives. We're on social media and there's yeah. positives to social media. But I think a ton of people, the Lord was highlighting, if, if there's not something good for you mm-hmm. in that don't follow those people. Don't, yeah. you know, consume that more than you consume your the word of God. Because yeah. the word is the weapon. And our mind is so, I don't know, just so like impressionable. It is. And, and the things that people yeah. say, like even if they say something and you're like, I'm strong enough to take what they say. Mm-hmm. It's like you have to allow those by putting on your full armor of God to bounce off of you. The accusations that are spoken right. instead of choosing to let it take root. You know, our pastor did a a really cool series on a sound mind Mm -hmm. and on um, just that battle of the mind. And it really had me thinking and praying through that because, 
he said a lot of really cool things, but, um, you know, it's just, you have to choose to mm-hmm. like, we can't control what comes in, what pops brain. in our head. Like, yeah. I mean, there's things that, you know, think about it. Like you're a great person and there's things you think about. You're like, how did that even, where did that come from? Mm-hmm. And, and I think that like so many people often ask me too, we did a podcast on how do you spend your quiet time with the Lord? How do you hear yeah. the Lord? We all hear the Lord differently. Um, but the thing is, is that if you hear those lies, that's the enemy talking mm-hmm. to you. So we don't have hearing problems, yeah. right? That really set, t- took root in me. Cause I mean, I've always been in tune with like, my feelings and my emotions and like these thoughts, like mm-hmm. I would feel less than or whatever. And, and you know, it's, it, and a lot of people feel that way, but mm-hmm. it's like, you can, you're hearing the wrong voice, not the right voice. Right. But well, our, our pastor in that series, he, talked he did about that. touch on that. He said, so many people say, I, how do I hear God? And I can't hear the voice of God or the Holy spirit. But the reality is, is that if you're hearing these lies coming in, you're hearing voices from the enemy. So if you can hear that, you can hear God. You just, it's a matter of what you tune into. And what you choose to consume and put mm-hmm. in your brain and your heart. It's yeah. like people, you know, it says in the word, it says meditate on like, what is that scripture that talks about like meditating on the things of God or the things of the Lord or something like that. And it's, and it's, it's all of, I mean, that is so true is like the things that even when our life is like, whatever circumstances are difficult and our pain is difficult, Mm -hmm. we can be so consumed by those things. And the only thing that gives us hope moving forward is meditating on the word of God and what the truth is. That's how you combat those lies. And I think, So often, like you said, we want to be mindless. We want to sort of escape our existence or whatever, not exist, full existence, but you know, our circumstances, (laughs) Circumstances. sometimes you're exhausted and you just want to escape the day. You're like, okay, I'm done. I want to check out. Um, but in doing that, yeah, you're not really, uh, getting yourself ready for the battle that we're actually in. I think I have felt such a heaviness over the last couple of weeks for, I know you felt this. A lot of people feel it's just where we're at. And I feel like the days of pretending that our world isn't what it is, is kind of over. You know, we can't just, we do have to be battle ready, so to speak. And the fact that we're sort of in this spiritual battle. And oh yeah, you have to have your, but see, the thing is, is like, you can't, there's a book called The Final Quest with Rick Joyner. You still haven't read it. I, it's actually on my nightstand right now. I'm starting Did it this week. Did I buy week. it for you? Yes. I did. Okay. Yeah, I was like, on I my night scene, I've looked at it all week. So <laughs> good. You need to. So I'm about to start it. <laughs> I've read it probably three times. I've read the final quest, all of the series that Rick Joyner has um, written about. I'm not actually reading another book that he has about, you know, liberty and justice and things like that. But what was so cool about it is he shows a picture of, you know, the end time army and, and just people that stand for Christ or say they stand mm-hmm. for Christ and how so many of us are walking around wounded or like Mm -hmm. complete, like, you know, trying to fight a battle with no sword, no helmet, no shoes, but just armor. Right. Because the word of God says, you know, I'll look up that scripture, but it talks about placing, you know, the helmet of salvation on Mm -hmm. your breastplate of righteousness, your belt of truth, your shoes of peace, Peace, hold up your shield of faith, but you wave the sword of the spirit. And the Lord highlighted what the sword of the spirit is, is the the word word. of God. Yeah. Right. And so, and it does say in Luke 10, 27, the religious scholar answered, it states, you must love the Lord, your God with all your heart, all your passion, all your energy and your every thought. And you must love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. So if that's like one of the greatest commandments God says is to love the the Lord with all of your heart, all your mind, Mm -hmm. your soul, your mind. Yeah. I mean, that scripture in Luke 10, 27, I mean, that states, it really states everything about the mind, Mm -hmm. you know? So how, how does that, what does that look like? Well, Mm -hmm. get off social media, stop watching your shows. I mean, like you've told, you've told, I've told you like Game of Thrones. (laughs) I'm just I like, could I never like get I'm into related, it. relatable yeah. here to people because I really yes. like shows like that that you know really have nothing to I say I say they have nothing to do with I don't like it because of like you know the sexual aspect or whatever yeah. I like intense shows and has a really cool storyline but the reality is that's how the enemy ropes you in mm-hmm. with a good storyline yes. and that storyline starts in your your mind yeah. or your heart you know I mean that's the so reality true. of it as I'm sitting here going but you know the storyline's really cool and it keeps me and I can guard myself from these things that mm-hmm. are going on that I know are inappropriate I really shouldn't be filling my mind with because yeah. you know the storyline's so good it makes me think of like did you remember that movie like back in the day when we were younger called like Josie and the Pussycat is was it Pussycats I, the, I recognize that, it, but I don't okay, know that I so ever it was like a girl band or something. Yeah. But in it, they did this whole thing where it was like subliminal mes- messaging. subliminal messaging mm-hmm. within these songs that they were cutting in the studio, mm-hmm. and it was like. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's like illegal or whatever. I don't know, but <laughs> and I don't remember all the whole thing about the movie, but. 
that's what it made me think of is like mm-hmm. these sub sub why even can I subliminal. say that oh my <laughs> <Subliminal>. gosh liminal <laughs> messages in these shows that we watch underlying themes that that I mean crap it's all over Disney too gosh you know yeah. so you have to be like whatever with that but there's just so much truth to that you know I love social media obviously being in YouTube and a lot's changed in my heart for that this year and I don't even know what where that's at at this point (laughs) (laughs) but um I love social media and what it can do and how you know having a platform really can impact people this podcast and sharing about the Lord there's so much good of it but what's what I have found like and especially this year is I almost consume basically none I hop on I post Mm -hmm. and it's I really don't scroll that much um and actually Steven's been fasting social media for the last few weeks and it's Mm -hmm. funny because like I would find him all the time just and I'm like he's kind of a little bit more like he gets a little bit I'm like dude babe your brain like it's melting as I would tell Taya get off the iPad your brain cells are melting you don't even realize (laughs) what's happening and I'm like gosh do something productive you know like and it's not that he's not productive don't mishear me I just mean like the time that we waste and spend and the mental energy on things and that what you just can f- literally don't serve you are just unreal. It is unreal. And it's just been what we've, it's been our culture. It's been kind of like what we were, you know, what, how we, how we've been programmed to adapt, you mm-hmm. know? And, and, and so, you know, like even like, I feel like that storyline is such a great thing because I, all that I mean has to do is plant one thought in your mm-hmm. head and you can run with it, yeah. you know, and you, and you can go, that's how fear comes in. Mm-hmm. It's well, fear is a spirit. So yes. let's, let's clear that up for yeah. people. So fear, people think, oh, I can't control the fear. Mm-hmm. The fear is the spirit of fear. It is a fear. demonic spirit. Yes. And I'll never forget talking about this at a church. People were like, it was some small group and all the girls were talking around about how they're fearful. I was like, guys, let's stop talking about like, how we feel. Yeah. Because it's a spirit that you have to cast out. Yeah. Like in the name of Jesus. Be, be it, gone, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so the reality is, is like, I've struggled a lot with fear. Um, more so in the past three or four years of my life than I ever, Mm -hmm. ever have. And it's really been pertaining to just some of the health issues I've gone with, which it reminded me when we were thinking about podcasts, I need to like dive into that at some point. Yeah. But just so many health issues, the fear of like, um, am I never going to get better? Is this my forever? Mm -hmm. Am I going to die? Like, you know, like that's anxiety too. And anxiety is a spirit as well. And I've had like full on panic attacks and Mm -hmm. I've never had that in my whole life. And that's when I've been, but now I've been able to recognize, Mm -hmm. which I didn't know that what is, that what I feel like too, it kind of starts with like entertaining the fear. Mm -hmm. You entertain that, you let it live around, you let it stay. You don't nip it in the bud. Then it kind of transitions to now. Okay. Now we're having this like anxiety and this like whatever. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of can go on to full-blown panic attacks. It's almost like the longer that you don't handle it Mm -hmm. and like get it out, the more that like manifests in your, in your spirit. And you know, cause fear is a, it can be a familiar spirit too. Meaning like the enemy knows areas of weakness in your life that really cause you to like doubt the Lord or, Mm -hmm. um, you know, go is like, why are these my circumstances? My health being one of them is a big trigger for me and the enemy knows that you know he distracts Mm -hmm. me all the time with all kinds of things but and some of this has creeped out of like nowhere but now that I know I say now that I know but nobody really taught me how we have control over those spirits Mm -hmm. when you when you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you yeah I've been able to go recognize it coming on Mm -hmm. and going in the name of Jesus be gone and then quoting the word of God yeah and that's something he was planting in me the other day when I was thinking about this is going I used to not plant the word of God I would call my mom or I'd call someone and be like I'm, I feel like I'm going to freak out or I feel like I'm having a meltdown or a moment and wanting to talk about why I was feeling overwhelmed. And the Lord's like, use your sword. Yeah. Use (laughs) use your sword. Like, you know what the word of God says. says, I didn't give you a spirit of fear, fear, but but a power power and love and a sound mind. And so that's exactly what I said, you know, a month or so ago when this kind of hit out of nowhere, I actually called my dad because Tyler was gone and Mm -hmm. he was in some meeting. And I said, dad, I'm, um, you know, I'm praying. I had, you know, I felt like a I just have, I'm feeling attacked right now. Like I'm feeling, and I don't need, and at this point, the crazy thing is, is I wasn't entertaining fear. It's a spirit too, right? So even though I I had already cast it out, my body was physically feeling the effects of that spirit. Mm -hmm. And I called my father and he started praying. I said, please pray for me Mm. out loud. Yeah. You know, and because like I said, usually that'd be Tyler and Tyler like has put his hand on my head and things like this have happened. And, um, 
you know, it went away, Mm -hmm. but I didn't, I wasn't entertaining it. I said, you know, I started saying, you know, Lord, you am fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm a daughter of the most high King. Um, you promised to never leave me nor forsake me. Like I just started speaking the word of God and the real, and the reality is, is our, the, our world doesn't promote the word of God. So no. you can't, you, we, we don't have the tools to combat the enemy. So no wonder we're bogged down by our circumstances, right. fear, whatever it is, um, because we don't actually fight back because we're not trained to fight mm-hmm. back. Yeah. And, and that's why hard things happen in life too. We're being refined. It's not because you did something wrong. Yeah. It's because you're doing something, something right. right. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's been so profound in my life so is good. knowing that, Hey, get your head out of social media mm-hmm. or whatever it and is. And get prepared to fight this battle and as you begin to God. walk into your calling. Yeah, the enemy, when you're doing what the Lord's asked you to do, the enemy's going to create resistance. And when you feel that, fight it off. With the word. And I mean, no we tell way. our kids too, and I know you do this with Taya. I mean, you know, they come in with bad dreams. You know, really not <laughs> Brody. Alligator. Addison. Yeah. <laughs> Taya, She's Taya. like, oh, I have a bad dream. And we, she speaks it out loud too. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, bad dreams go in the name of that's Jesus. What, what and say. whatever it is that, you know, fear go. And we always tell her, you know, fear isn't from God. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to like, you don't have to be fearful. You can, you can say, you know, fear, go Holy spirit, come fill that with the Holy spirit instead of the fear. Um, that's like our church's whole thing. Yeah. Um, We actually say that a lot. We say it all the time and the kids really jump on that and really like, no. And so, you know, sometimes I'm leaving her room. She'll say, what if I had a bad, have a bad dream? I'm like, Call it out loud. I say, tell Taya, you, know, you say have it, the authority. Tell it to go. And then if you can't figure it out, then you can come Obviously get me. Get, get, <laughs> get mama. And, you know, I tell it to yeah. you when we pray, you know, I say, so repeat good. after me. I have the mind of Christ. Mm-hmm. I have the mind of Christ. Yeah. I have the mind of Christ. And we just keep saying it. And like yeah. that, some of those times that it's happened to me, I, I say, I have the mind of Christ. Yeah. I have the mind of Christ. I will Love not that. fear. I have the mind of Christ. You know, Christ. And then though I walk through the valley, whatever, like yeah. I start speaking what the word says and the Lord has just reminded me so much of that that needs to be what I meditate on in those Mm -hmm. moments of quiet obviously being a mother life happens like we talked about even today it's like I was trying to have my time with the Lord Hunter was screaming yeah (laughs) Yeah, like a busy morning it's like the word of God is our weapon and it says that our weapons are not carnal they're spiritual. What's that scripture? It says, um, I think sure. it's though we battle it not against flesh and blood, but of powers and pen- principalities uh, yeah. and rules yeah, yeah, of the yeah. dark. I'm going to find that scripture mm-hmm. because that's the reality of it. Folks, people can say, Hey, you know, whatever, but it's like, yeah, you're not warring against the flesh. You're yeah. warring against spiritual things mm-hmm. and, and that are more real. Yeah. And those so are good. spirits and nobody wants to be in that bondage or that prison cell. Right. You know, and you know, it's interesting. I, um, I, never dealt with anxiety in my life. I I used to always hear people talking about anxiety and it was just not something I really battled, um, until after becoming a mom. And it wasn't right after, and it wasn't, it wasn't a fearful thing. It wasn't like, Oh, I was worried about, um, things with the kids or anything like that. It was more of, I think, stemming from like sort of when I think about it, I think it was stemming from maybe a place of overwhelm at times and from, realizing I can't control everything in my environment Mm because I think I tend to lend towards liking things a certain way and controlling aspects and when I realize I can't fully do that then sometimes that will come come at me even and even in starting this podcast I remember there's a couple episodes in the beginning I I remember I came over a couple times I was like man I'm like I can't shake it and I keep Mm -hmm. trying I keep calling it out and casting it out and I just feel this heaviness you know and Mm -hmm. could not figure out you know what it was and you know, trying to get to the root. Okay. Is it fear of man? Is it that I'm worried about, um, sounding stupid or (laughs) saying a wrong thing or this or that. And so those are even things as the Lord calls you into certain things like this podcast that has really stretched me and grown and helped me grow. Um, and I, I haven't really had that anxious feeling in a while. Like I would say a few months or so. I mean, three, four months. I don't know. It hasn't been a thing. And it was never a consistent thing for me, but there was just moments that I would feel that and figuring out, I'd be like, okay, this is like what people talk about. And then realizing that, okay, I don't have to accept this. Mm -mm. And 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 that doesn't become become your reality. And I think a lot of people go, I have anxiety. And so I'm going to go to a doctor and like, Hey, care. I'm not going to like say people don't need medicine, but so often, no, but I think that, you know, yeah, I mean, I think that that's what we, our culture, our society, I mean, I, wants to mask everything. I was, when I had all this health stuff, the first doctor I went to was like, you need to take antidepressants. And mm-hmm. I said, why? Yeah. Like, 
my physical body. Yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm messed up because you guys aren't doing your job and figuring out like yeah. what's wrong with me, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like there's things that need that, that have to, you know, I'm not saying that that's always the of case course. is to not do that, but I'm saying, but re- when you realize that you have an authority mm-hmm. and that, I mean, you can try like for a while, like that's what I realized is I'm like, man, I can, I'm combating this with scripture, with the word of God, what I know to be true. And I, I started getting to a point where as it kept happening, I started getting pissed off. I was like, dude, I'm not going to freaking live like this. I'm not going to have this heaviness on me forever just because I'm trying to like follow what it is that the Lord's asking me to do. And then label yourself that. And I think that's something that I've had to be very careful about because I'm more quick to go. I have this or I struggle struggle with with this. this. And the Lord's really been like, Ashton, your words hold weight. They have power. Like stop saying that you, that this is your reality. Mm -hmm. Like I'm giving you, it's false evidence. Mm -hmm. Right. We look at our reality through our like lens of pain and through Mm -hmm. our circumstance and what our natural eyes are seeing. Mm -hmm. We can't see what the Lord is orchestrating behind the scenes. We can't see why we're going through these processes that suck. And what you just said about, recognizing the spirit and combating it. I think people think that, no, if you, if you do struggle with this familiar spirit that keeps coming back, keeps coming back, it's, you have to war. Yeah. You have to battle. Like Just you, like it's, it's coming not, to you. You got to fight it back. back. And that's not, yeah. and you can't retreat so easily. And, and I mean, easily being fit the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. I mean, mm-hmm. I consider that to be easy with how God's taught me about what yeah. warring really looks like, because yeah. I'd be like, it's been five years since I've been battling this. And mm-hmm. he's like, God knows no time. Yeah. And I'm focusing on the length of it instead mm-hmm. of like the fact that I'm still in the battle. Yeah. And this is the scripture in second Corinthians 10. <laughs> this translation is fire. Which the passion is translation passion. is my favorite it's translation. So it says for, although we live in the natural realm, we don't wage a military campaign employing human weapons using manipulation to achieve our aims. Instead, our spiritual weapons are energized with divine power to effectively dismantle the defenses behind which people hide. We can demolish every deceptive fantasy that opposes God and break through every arrogant attitude that is raised up in defiance of the true knowledge of God. We capture like prisoners of war, every thought and and insist it bow in obedience to the anointed one. What I love about that is this goes into thinking that, and you know, the enemy works through people yeah. as well and you know so when you think about the strategies of the enemy he's he's attacking your mind because he knows that's where he can chase after your identity mm. well I feel like this today so I must struggle with chronic yes. depression yeah um, and I believe me I've had days where I'm like I feel that I'm a high functioning yeah depressed person because I, I I mean but my point is is I know what it feels like to have that mental battle where you're like, I, I feel completely and utterly destroyed. Yeah. Right. And I mean, I felt that I fought through it Mm -hmm. and there are days I felt victorious and days where I felt not victorious, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's something that the Lord's been so gracious with me walking through this, these tougher seasons of my life. And people will probably never know that about me because I am just such a hard hitter, Mm -hmm. but I've had days where I'm like, all I've done is speak the word because I don't have the energy. Yeah to face life, you know? I mean, Mm -hmm. but I'm not, I, he's continually told me who I am and that's because I sat in his presence. Mm -hmm. I've chosen to speak his word when I didn't feel like it. I've chosen to listen to worship music when I don't want to. Yeah. I mean, all these are real things and like our society puts a a word of God instead of scrolling. Cause a lot of those things are coping mechanisms of not actually having to deal with the root of what's going or, you know, like not actually having to go to those places, but that's not where the healing is. The healing's in the word of God and and people misconstrue truth for you're not loving. And it's actually the opposite for me. It's like, because I've seen God Mm -hmm. completely set me free in truth. That's what I want for other people. Yeah. And and to me, truth is not always the pleasant thing you want to hear. Like, I'm not going to partner with you if you're like, I feel like a vampire today. Mm -hmm. I must be a vampire. Yeah. You're not a vampire, Amanda. No. You're not. I mean, you might feel like. Being loving, too, is (laughs) is basis. Like we talked about before, the world is changing. We change. Our feelings change. Our circumstances change. The only thing that doesn't change is the word of God. And when you base. (laughs) When you base truth off of, like, actual truth, which is the word of God. Then you go, you call people out in a loving manner based on biblical truth, not on how you feel or, you know, what makes you happy, you know, things like that. So, yeah, yeah. It's so very I, think tri- it's this, very I think there's this element that people say, oh, like Christians have to be just like, oh, that's not loving. And like, the, you know, but that's not actually no, what we're called to No, and don't get me wrong. Like. There's been quite a few. I hear this a lot. There's been so much 
misconstrued like Christians there's a lot of people that call themselves Christians and they're not Christians let's just put it out there that way that's why I actually love to say that I'm a Christ follower because to me it's like I follow the Lord Mm -hmm. um at any cost right I think that there's been this thing if it's like you know Satan believes in Jesus right so it's not enough to say I believe in Jesus well congratulations the devil does too yeah right I mean you know I mean that's the reality of it I think people have been so burned by religion Mm -hmm. by Christians Mm -hmm. by the church I mean it's been flawed the American church has been flawed that is and you know Christians are flawed and there are people out there that are a poor representation of that and 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 so there are there is so much of that that people focus on they focus on humans who are incapable Mm -hmm. of loving the way God does right and they dictate their whole theology based off of a broken human who Mm -hmm. says that they're a Christian yeah or you know and it's like instead of just going hey I'm gonna go to the straight to God yeah. I'm not going to focus on how flawed these people are yeah. I'm in their representation the of, you know, the Lord. And I felt like that's what, you know, just him sharing with me about the mind. That's also a strategy of the enemy to keep mm-hmm. you from walking into the fullness of your calling yeah. and who God's created you to be. Because so nobody wants to be in prison. Yeah. No, I don't care who you are and what you believe and where you where you've been in your life. Nobody wants to be in prison to their mind yeah. and to depression or, and to suicide and yeah. to anxiety and to fear of not being enough and to mm-hmm. whatever it is, you yeah. know, and, and it's funny how these things just keep popping up. You know, you mm-hmm. had a dream about the fun house. I told you, like I struggled with in this season, like not liking what my body looks like. People yeah. go, you're nuts. That's a whole nother thing. My yeah. point is, is there are real thoughts yeah. that I have well, to and, cast out? Yeah. And as like in talking about that, yeah, she was talking about the fun house. I like felt like the Lord showed me this picture of a fun house. And when you think about what a fun house is, it's like filled with these fun mirrors that distort. They're distortion. Called dis- they're called distorted yeah. distortion mirrors and yeah. they distort what you look like. And so, yeah, yeah. When you see your yourself through a lens that isn't what God says about you, it's through these tormenting. Think about how creepy a fun house is, right? With like class and all this Ugh. stuff so that's kind of how I, v- I view like if you think of that scene from Greece because that's how I like saw it mm-hmm. of like there's like the way in and there's also the way out and it can feel imprisoning to be in this whole element that makes you feel unstable and off and weird and you're got all these funky clowns and right and so the way I think of that is the enemy with these tormenting voices mm-hmm. going you know speaking lies about your body or Then as I gave you that word, I felt like I could take that on for myself because there's been so many moments and certain things we've walked through and I've personally walked through where I've gone, gone, man, my life feels like a prison to some degree Mm -hmm. from certain perspectives, but it's also, and there are real circumstances that make me feel that way at times, but at the same time, it's also the lens I'm looking at it through Mm -hmm. because a couple weeks ago when I felt that way, nothing's changed to today, but I feel like a different person and it's because what have I been meditating on? What have I said? No, mm. I'm not going to like, you know, entertain those thoughts. I'm going to walk out of the fun house. Like I can choose to walk into the light and not mm. look at my situation or my circumstances or my body or this or that through this distortion mirror. I can walk out and look at it from a lens of what the Lord says to be true. Well, then because you have eyes to see what God's calling you to do. It says, you know, we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen because what's seen is temporary, but what you can't see is eternal. And I always take that, you know, go back to that, even with things like as simple as your body, you know, but it's like the reality is, is this is where, I mean, I think that's weapon scripture is so cool because it's like, we are not, we are constantly in a battle. That's what, what that's what life, that's what life is. Mm -hmm. Right. I wish I could be like, Hey, ignorance is bliss. Ignorance is bliss. I can't ever go back to the way it used to be. But when you recognize that you're in a battle Mm -hmm. and, and that, the war is on your soul and other people, you actually see other people in a totally different light. Yeah. You're like, Lord, like how can I, you know, you're not so focused on, yeah, your circumstances, like being in prison. Like, so what, what, what changed? Well, I, I shifted my mindset. I, I started focusing on what matters yes. and what doesn't matter. What's unseen instead of what's seen. Mm-hmm. Because when you, and you know, that's not, doesn't mean your race is going to be easy. No, it's, it's, it's very easy hard for anybody. It's never easy. And, and I wish I could say that like, you know, but in it is God's joy. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I never thought I would be in a place where I could be so weary, Mm -hmm. but yet under like, but yet knowing that in his presence is the fullness of joy. And that's really what, you know, we're going towards. And so, yeah, like we said in the last podcast, like if you can learn how to Take every your mind. thought captive yeah. to the obedience of Christ. Capture like, every thought. Those, like you said earlier, you can't control what pops in your head, but you can control what you do with it. Yeah. Do you meditate on that? Do you start to believe that? If it's these thoughts that are popping in your head and voices that are condemning or negative or tearing you down. Offense like, is a huge that one. That is not God. 
no, it's not of God. And, you know, a lot of times it takes you going low, being humble Mm -hmm. and to humbly walk out your call. And, you know, when you have a very intense personality like me, we were just talking about that. Mm -hmm. Like I've learned a lot about humility and a lot about um, less of me, more of the Lord. And obviously he made me the way that he made me and he created me to be who he's called me to be. But we all have thought like areas of our personality that could be could have gone one way or the other yeah right if we don't subdue our flesh Mm -hmm. you know and we um you know fill our mind with the things of god and the only way to win the battle and the victory of your mind is to fill it with the word of god to battle and it is a battle there's a cool book about that i think joyce meyer did something on that and i'll have to like include that yeah i read it a while ago it was good and um you know same thing with a strong community surround yourself with people that call out those lies and i think that's been really big for me as Mm -hmm. i've had women you know, and men say, you know, you're what, be- what, you, what lie is it that you're believing today? Yeah. You know, what lie? And I think you can even, you can even ask yourself that when you're on your own with your quiet time, Lord, like what lie am I believing today? And how has it affected yeah. my view of you or my life where mm-hmm. you've called me? Cause enemy's just trying to trip you up from totally. bringing free- freedom to other people. Yeah. And so hopefully this, you know, blesses you Love guys that. today and we'll include the scriptures that we've mm-hmm. talked about. And yeah. I'll, my, I'll also put the sermon from oh, yeah. that our pastor did this weekend on a sound. That line, will be awesome. It was really, really it was good. So good. Um, and you might uh, enjoy listening to that. So, well, thanks for being here. And um, yeah, it's a fun conversation. Yeah. I mean, not super fun, fun but well, I mean, it, I just, you know, it's, it's nice easy to talk about you know what I think it's just like fun. I think why I say fun every time, although it's like, <laughs> it's, it's heavier topics, but I like, it is fun to sit and talk about the Lord and to, it, you know what it makes me feel like is like, it makes me leave. And I hope you guys feel this when y'all leave like hopeful and of like and encouraged and just hopeful of like what you know to be true of God and that he just loves you so much and he's working all things for good. He's working behind the scenes when you feel like you're stuck. Mm-hmm. He's still working on An stuff. iron and sharpens so cool. iron. So yeah. yeah. So thanks for being here and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.